Howdy, for this video, this is going to be a tutorial pretty much how to create a world from scratch and how to actually set up your world and have everything initially good to go so whenever you start actually customizing everything, it's set. So this is more geared towards players that's, you know, they, they're like, you know, hey, I've heard about Foundry, I'm not really sure what it's about. You know, they've maybe they've gone to the website, they've played the web demo and kind of seen how it plays, which, I mean, when I played it initially, I actually had a lot of trouble just because it only shows you the player's perspective. So it was really hard to kind of figure out what was going on because you're just dropped in this huge room and they're like, you have all these characters you can pick from and you don't really know pretty much how to do anything. It's, it's very confusing. So when I first did, I wasn't really sold on it. But then when I was like, you know what, I'm just going to just break down. It's only 50 bucks. I bought it, I bought the access key, loaded it up, and then once I started, you know, playing around with it, I was like, okay, I actually really like this. So this is this is more geared towards, you know, hey, I've just downloaded Foundry and what do I do next? So, you know, you download, you got your access key, everything's loaded, you got the game up, and you you've turned on Foundry and you you get a big blank world that shows, you know, create world and you don't really know what to do. So what I ended up doing, what helped me out a lot initially, was when I first turned it on, uh, they have an option to go to install world. So they have some worlds that are already pre-built that kind of do a lot of the stuff for you so you can kind of see how the foundry works and you know what, what it's really capable of once you actually set everything up the right way. So at the very bottom, I actually really recommend the Clash of the Cobalt Cauldron and the Mad Biomancer's Tower. Both of those are set up really well. They already have the music set up. They have the journal entries. They have the characters already set up on the map. They have some really cool scenes that are already kind of enhanced and have some really cool effects set up too. It just really shows you what Foundry can do. Uh, I was I was very happy and very surprised because I played on Fantasy Grounds and I was you know, on Fantasy Ground Unity and I mean I like some of the new features on it but then I was blown away from all the things that you could do on Foundry so I was I was hooked almost immediately. So once you set it up and you can play around with that to kind of see what what the world's like, then it's like okay now I want to create my own. So what you'll do is you'll come down here to click Create World and we'll get to that in just a second. So depending on what game system you're playing on, so I play on 5e. So, but if you were wanting to play on something else, so you would go down here to click install system and it has almost any possible game system you could think of. I and mean, if you want to play Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, 3.5, I mean, there's so many different things that you can load into this. If there's a game world for it, it's probably on here. Hell, you don't even have to play it if you don't want to. There's, you can play without having a game system if you really want to. But you would just click whatever you want. You click install. It'll, it'll go through the process of doing that. Uh, do know, though, that sometimes these do update. Uh, I had one time where I had a bunch of modules set up and they were not working and I had no idea why and it was because my game system was out of date. So do check for updates occasionally because it, it might be out of date or they might have updated it and you know there might be some new features you didn't know about. So always kind of keep an eye on it. You know, update it you know, like once every other week or so just to make sure everything looks good. So with the add-ons, these create additional things for your game to really enhance it. There's UI settings, there's, you know, you can change the theme. You can, you know, add additional things for your for your games, your players to really streamline stuff. I have tons of tutorial videos of how to use different modules and set them up the right way. And to install a module, you go down to this little box here and click install module. You know, whatever module that you're wanting, you know, you can look through and then to, to download it or install it, you just click install right here. But if you're really not sure what it is, then you could say go to uh, there's a little GitHub page like here where you can click on it and they'll actually give you a description of what the module it is, kind of show you some pictures and stuff of how to set up. There's some of them they'll have like videos that'll show you like a quick tutorial of how to do it. So there's some there's some really good modules in here. I I love having modules on my game. Uh, and then in addition to that, you have the configuration. This will be like setting up if you're using like port forwarding or thing. You can set up whatever port you're using. If you're needing to do, if you're actually going to use Foundry's webcam and chat feature, then you need to have an SSL certificate and the private key to set that up. Otherwise, it won't let you even have access to those features. And then also the game, uh, the, the version of the game will update constantly. So it's currently on 0.7.9, which is the most stable version right now. They are currently in the process of doing 0.8.1, which is in its alpha stage right now. I wouldn't recommend doing, it, especially if you're new, because they're just gonna be really buggy initially. But they're they're getting it they're getting it really ready. It, it won't take them too much longer, I don't think. And then you know once they update it, it's you always want to go to the newest one because it's it's always it's always really good. But definitely wait until it's stable before you switch because it's it'll be really buggy. And if you're new, if it's you're gonna run into all kinds of problems. So now let's actually create our world. So we'll go down to create world. You're gonna name it whatever you're gonna do. So I'm currently in the process of creating a Grim Hollow world using the campaign guide. I'm 
currently backing their third Kickstarter for the Monster Manual to actually have all the main things I need to be able to really run the world. So I'm just going to name it, uh, I'm going to do Grim Hollow, and just the little world name is lowercase, I'm just going to do GE. The game system, like I use 5e, you will not be able to upload a background image initially because the world doesn't actually give you the option to click on it yet, and then when you try to load an image, it won't do it. You have to pretty much load the game and then load an image, and then once you have an image loaded in the game, then when you close it, you can go back to edit your world, and then you can add an image for like a background image. If you want to customize the setup to show when your next session is going to be, like I know our next session is going to be on the 1st of May, so I would do that, and that would set up to whatever time it's going to be, so we always play at 8 o'clock. So I'd set that up, and it'd be like, my next session is going to be May 1st at 8 p.m. And then for your world description, it's just going to just kind of a brief summary of what the campaign's about. So for me, like, I'll usually go to my campaign guides because I'm using Grim Hollow, and I will set up, and I, I've been using this little uh, little box right here. I'll add this one in, and add that one, and then we'll add, I think I do, this is the, the other one I add in. And then this kind of gives me just a good little base, down and dirty description of what my game's going to be about. So once you do that, you'll create your world, and you are good to go. So this one, I think it's going to be this one, because I forgot to click. I usually been writing Grim Hollow 2, so I can know the difference between the two. So once you do this, you're going to have just a blank slate. So your game will initially pop up, say, Game Pause. To unpause it, just click the space bar. And this is, is blank. There's nothing on here. There's there's no characters loaded. There's no scenes. There's no maps. That's There's nothing. It's, it's a blank canvas for you to set it up and do what you want. So to actually get that background image that you're going to want, like how I, I always set it up for so it doesn't look so bland, you want to click and create an entry. I usually just do something like uh, like background, and I'll go through, and I'll want to upload an image. So I have on my desktop, uh, like, so you'll go to your world, and GH is the one I just created. So there's no real folder. There's only just a handful of things in here. Pretty much even in the everything in this is very blank. So you'll create a new folder, and so I'm going to do... Uh, pictures I can't type tonight and click that and so I'll go into pictures and I'm going to choose my file that I'm going to use so I think on my desktop I have just the Grim Hollow image and that's the image that I'm going to use and you click the checkbox and when I load my game and close it and load it again I'll click this image to to actually have as my background image which I'll do that real quick it won't show it when I reload it because it's going to be closed and open so fast so it doesn't always process the change just yet so this is actually my other world and then this is the this is the new one as i saw by the text i knew i knew i was clicking on the wrong one and i would have been upset all right so update this and we'll launch it so we're back in our new base world and you know you don't really have anything to do with so the only thing that's already pre generated in the game is in the compendium so this is just going to be whatever game system you have is going to have base stuff for that system in the game loaded for you so since i'm using 5e it's already going to have just some already pre-generated monsters uh some of them will have tokens all of them are going to be drop down style tokens and you know they'll already have all the stats and everything ready to go for them you can import all of these into the game and you can immediately use them you can straight drag them onto the scene. Like once you have a scene set up, you can just open up the compendium and just drop them straight onto the game and it'll import that one specific actor into your game. So that way you can go back and look at them later and then you can adjust them accordingly. Uh, same thing with the SRD items. It's got pretty much every major item. Uh, if you really want to add these into your game so you can kind of customize a little bit more, you can just right click it and click import all content. And once it's done uploading everything, you can go to your items directory and then you can pick on whatever thing you want to do. So like, let's say you want to mess with this battle axe and you want to duplicate it and you want to adjust a, a, a new one. So we'll say we'll do, we'll do it and call it a, um, we'll just say it's a worn battle axe. And then you could go through if you want to customize it and, you know, you'd be like the battle axe has notches all throughout it for, you know, kills that have been, you know, the person who used it, you know, all the all the kills have been notched into the, the battle axe just to show, you know, how violent that person was. And you can do this and you can create new items, you can customize everything, you can use something as a as a base and completely add new effects to it and, and do just a bunch of various things. Uh, in addition to that, you have your journal entry tab where you can create journal entries. You'll create you can create folders and you can add, you know, story entries. And since I'm using the Grim Hollow one, typically what I'll do is I'll, you know, name 
you know, whatever my folder is going to be, or, you know, as soon as I can copy this, I'll, you know, do like a lost Pantheon, and then I'll create a folder. And then once you open up the folder, you can create an additional entries. And then I'll do, I'll just do the lost Pantheon again. And then I'll copy the, the text that I'm going to use for that and do that. And then I'll have a blank slate and I'll be able to actually kind of go through and kind of mess with it and then say we arch demons and do that one and that would be a journal entry and then I could do that and I could transfer all the info from that PDF into the game you know a bit by bit uh, unfortunately because I don't have this this isn't in roll 20 yet and it hasn't really been configured yet so like if you had something like that's already been made by roll 20 like Curse of Scrod and you know Rise of Tiamat anything like that you can you know, you can buy them on Roll20. They have a module that actually is a Roll20 converter and actually convert all the stuff to Foundry. It's very helpful. I've done it many a time. It, it works out great. It saves you a lot of effort. Uh, you can create rollable tables. You can add music and playlists. You can create sound effects. Uh, the compendium has a lot of just, you know, base generic things. It'll have all your spells and, you know, it'll uh, you can create additional spells and new things. Now, when you go to the last one, which is the settings, this is actually how you're going to be able to create players and add additional players into the game. So when you go to configure players, see now I have my new my little backdrop too. So you're going to go down here and you're going to create additional users. So what I usually do is I actually rename them to the players that are going to be in the game. And I'll do this. And I'll you know go ahead and have everything set up so that when they log in, they're okay, I click this and that'll be my player. Now, you actually, you might, you can also have, say, if you have a lot of stuff that you have to do and you have a lot of things that you have to plan and you have a person that's been with you a real long time, they're really helpful and they kind of help you get your game set up. You can actually give a player additional permissions and they can actually edit more stuff in the game because normally as a player, they have very little things that they can mess with. They can only look at things that they have permission for. They can't create new things. They can't, you know, take anything that they don't have access to. They pretty much can only see stuff that's in the compendium. And that's pretty much it. And there's very few things. Unless you've given them specific permission to use it, they, they can't do much. They even have very limited UI settings. But you can, say, make a person... You can make a player at the same level as a game master, and they can edit anything. Or you could have them as assistant, and then that'll give them you know a few more things. A little bit less than game master, but they can still edit a lot and go from there. But once that's done, you just click Save and Return. And then you click whatever player you're going to do. So I'm going back in the game master. Now... If you have players that are playing on something like a laptop that's a little older and it, you know it's not really a game and laptop it's like an HP or Dell so it's a standard laptop then they might have issues running the game occasionally especially if you really just go all out and just put crazy modules and you, you add like crazy images and you have like you know lights and everything and everything's like transitioning back and forth and you got cool effects and you know every time you cast a spell it shoots like an explosion or fireball and Sometimes I can really, really bog down a, a player's computer. So when you go into the game settings, you go to configure settings. Uh, so if you actually lower the frame rate, that'll actually greatly improve the, the quality of their game, especially if their computer's struggling to be able to keep up with it. So 20 is actually kind of a really good level that it doesn't really take away from playing the game, but also still kind of keeps a lot of the features that you want to show and you know, kind of like show off all the things that you can do. Another one that actually really helps to disable, especially if a player's really struggling with the game and it's just not loading it takes them they're spending five minutes just trying to load the image in the page then is actually disabling the enable soft shadows so when sh when you have the buildings you know when you when you create a scene and you, you make a house or whatever and if if you draw the walls and everything and a person's like moving to the left of it you'll actually see the the shadows of the building slowly transition from like a dark to like a light kind of like translucent appearance so Unfortunately, with that, that, that takes a lot of stress on the computer and the graphics card to be able to keep up with that. So if you disable that, it'll just make it just a straight black, you know, kind of just straight line. And it doesn't really does that little transition. I mean, it takes a little bit away of it. But honestly, if it's if that's your wall you're going to lose to be able to run the game efficiently, I, I'd lose it every single time. And uh, there's another one that drives me insane. Uh, when you're clicking on things, especially once you have a bunch of things left up, this uh, left click to release objects, disable that. It will save your life, or make sure you have it uh, enabled, so that way you can just click off to the left something, and then you'll be able to get all things. Because if not, it's usually not pre-selected, and it, it drives me absolutely bonkers, because you're like, okay, what do I do to not toggle this person? So once you do that, then you can 
it, it, it'll make your life a lot easier, I promise. Uh, the system settings, so depending on whatever system you're using, like I'm, like I'm using 5e, it's going to have the player's handbook. You know, you can have, you know, some additional ones that are, uh, I don't really, I've never really even messed with these, uh, the different, you know, rest variants. And, you know, you'll have some different, uh, uh, you'll have like the, the dungeons handbook and then like the uh, uh, diagonal movement for like the DMG. And also like if you have pet players that have like a lot of currency, like someone holds like 2,000 gold, then you know that's going to weigh them down you can actually if you don't want to worry about weight or you're not really caring about encumbrance then you can disable like currency weight so that way they're only just really worrying about the weight of their items and then once you have modules loaded then you'll actually can configure them and adjust them in this menu right here so like if you're actually going to load modules into the game you'll come to this module manage modules tab right here and then you would click on whatever thing that you're going to add into the game. So like, I'll just do one that'll let you actually see like the change. So like, I'm gonna add this calendar weather, save it. And once it loads, now I have this new little calendar weather icon that I can actually adjust and I can create days of the week and things like that. And now once I go into my configure settings, and I go to module settings, now I actually have some stuff that I can edit for that actual module. So. But that's pretty much it. Uh, in addition to that, you have just a couple of UI settings on here on the left. Uh, I can't really access much of this because I don't have any scenes built right now. But uh, the first one is just going to be just the player ones. It's going to show you the, the player that they select on. It's going to show you what they can actually target. And it's actually going to show you... Um, I'm trying to remember what the last one is. I, I can't remember. I, I, always, I always can usually see it. But uh, I can usually just create a... We'll just create a, a blank scene. That way you can at least... Uh, toggle everything and at least can hover over them yeah and then it's got just a ruler so you can kind of measure the distance of something and then you can actually target an enemy this one is a to be able to create templates so you can create like circle templates you can create a cone square uh, a straight line and you can hit this button and it'll delete all of them uh, the this three blocks thing is actually tiles so you can create uh, various effects like you can add numbers and they pretty much just takes an image and it puts it onto the game that can be hidden and revealed. Like say if you want to put like a trap onto a onto a map, you can get like a picture of a trap. Like you just get like an asset from, you know, any like Patreon or anything like that that creates traps or find a picture on the internet and you can add that one specific picture and you can put it in the hallway and then you can hide it. And then whenever your player like walks over to that and you're like, oh hey make a dex check and you can reveal that trap and boom and you can pop the image up and it makes a really, really kind of cool little effect. Uh, drawing tool is simple what it is it's drawing tool uh, square circles you can do you know freeform objects and then you have just a standard drawing tool I'm trying to get this to stop why won't you click I want it to stop why won't you stop and uh, that is being stubborn I'll just reload it so get rid of that it's not it's driving me bonkers uh and then you'll have a free drawing tool that you can you know if you need to just kind of like circle something and be like hey you know come over here and you can you know draw an arrow onto the game it has a free uh text box where you can you know customize and add text uh, you'll have the build tool so whenever you want to build walls and things like that you can use these to 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 build walls and you know once once you have your scene then you can customize everything uh, you have your lighting menu so you can actually create lights and you can actually transition from like day and nighttime mode and you know your lights can be a little bit more unique like you can have like you can create like various effects like a torch and you know you can create like a fire effect and you know you can go over to like a kind of a cool fiery glow and you know it, it really really fun fun things and this this is one of my biggest things that I was like really sold on is being able to do like the lighting and I, I really really enjoyed that being able to create sounds like you can create uh, additional sounds like you can create like local small spots where you can add like a you can add like a sound effect of a person like cheering or a person like yelling hot pie hot pie and then add that to that specific area so whenever your players get close to that area they'll actually hear that and this last one is for uh, journal entries so if you have this one it'll toggle it so once you have a journal entry onto the map you'll actually be able to like see it so like if i have it on here uh, I won't actually see it unless I click this uh, little this button, and I don't think I have anything on the scene right now, and it it won't reveal it to the players unless it's toggled to actually display it, and that's pretty much it for just the UI settings. I'll go into a little bit more in depth, especially depending on whatever I'm going over. Like if I'm going over when I start talking about scenes, I'll I'll go over the this the building tab in really really good depth. 
But other than that, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, let me know, and I'll be sure to help you as much as I can. Uh, but uh, I think this is going to be a fun little, uh, fun little series. But till then, if you need anything, just let me know, and have a good day.